didn't Lonely Island, the the band, have a song, Dick in a Boat? No. How <laughs> did it, Dick, Dick. <laughs> He's been out in that boat a long time now. <laughs> Going back to uh, uh, the Fitzold podcast, uh, on there they, they mentioned something I never heard of before. That was something I would wanted to talk to you about, Glenn. Was it a that is, name? It's Combo 3. Combo trees, uh, where you take like oh. four different things and graft it to a single root. They thought, well, plum, nectarine, peach, and apricot well, they were grafted all on the, the same thing. Yeah, they're known as family trees, and it's very common with apples and pears. Hmm. So, yeah, basically, you, you does it work? <laughs> is my question. How well, well does it work? <laughs> <laughs> it works fine because um, peaches, nectarines, and plums are all in the same genus, so they're all prunus. So that that should work fine, and it works well with apples because you need at least one or two other pollinators in the same pollination group to get an apple off your tree. So if you put three apples on the same rootstock of different varieties but in the same pollination group, then, yeah, it works very well. You can have one tree but three varieties of apple, basically. Cool. Yeah. But does that work with apples that grow in the different time of the year so you get more or less a constant apple tree <laughs> or do <laughs> well, they need to be the same kind of a spring apple or winter apple or whatever it's called well apple, apples all are produced at the same time so if you want apples all year round you're going to have to go to different countries <laughs> yeah, not, KJ. not all year round but I mean, some are early some are late that's what i meant yeah yeah, yeah but then they wouldn't be horny at the same time yeah. and the cross pollination <laughs> should not be possible no, that, then guess, you don't so. get that pr- that uh, yeah. thingy yeah that's but it's, it's, first. it's just important that they're in the same pollination group so they're basically flowering at the same time so they can oh yeah then they need to uh, yeah okay yeah yeah but, yeah, but i mean work. you don't need them to pollinate themselves but if you have other trees around if there are other apple trees in that yeah. same pollination group around maybe in the neighbor's garden then yeah that's fine but if there's yeah. not one for a couple of miles then you've got yeah you need some very very busy bees to do that job for you <laughs> we, true, we, we live in a very big uh apple county so of course there is there is there is no problem having a singular tree um, but our pear tree is uh, the only one in this region of the country i think so <laughs> there hasn't been any plums on it <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. First, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or peaches. And ve- very little pollination. To say. <laughs> yeah, but it is actually gra- grafted onto cherries, I think, uh, and then that the is coming. Yeah. No. Don't you call them cherries? The small round ones, because it's coming out from the root, the, actually the other fruit, and that the neighbor has the same one. So they are actually pollinating. So that is actually growing, but it doesn't, the branches that were actually sold as a, a pear tree doesn't produce, no, no they, not they, pear, plum, plum, sorry. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah, that's, that's why your pear tree is not growing plums. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are. Well, they're, they're all. Prunus, um, peach. Uh, sorry, your pe- your plum, your uh, peach, and uh, nectarines and cherries are all in the in the same genus. They're all prunus. Yeah. So yeah, so they they're grafted onto some sort of it probably is a cherry stock. And well, except from uh, the, the plum tree uh, not growing pears, uh, the apple trees <laughs> and also the. The other mm-hmm. plants that was attacked this winter by these rodents, they are actually blooming and apples are coming and it seems like the outer bark is actually browning, changing colors. Yeah. So it looks like they actually just nibbled on the very outer layer, but not the one in between and it yeah. didn't dry out. But I mean, they might still die, but at least they're trying. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a technique to get um, some fruit trees into to make them fruit is to stress them out. So if you stress a plant out, sometimes it will think, oh, I need to reproduce. So they they will sometimes stress fruit trees out by basically taking a ring of bark off them. But it's a very skilled job because if you do it wrong, it's dead. <laughs> <basically>. <laughs> yeah. 
that sounds like something middle management is doing in an office job as well. Try to stress <laughs> out the employees to make them perform <laughs> yeah. better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if they do it too much, they kill themselves. <laughs> and a, f- a funny thing, of course, over middle management and upper management, they are, of course, trained in the usual way of running HR. And then you had the pandemic and everyone was sitting at home. Their usual toolbox for actually controlling your workforce don't work because you're not there. And turns out the workforce were sitting at home having wanks between meetings to keep the stress level down. And now they're forced <laughs> to go back to the office. And I don't want to because I can't have my lunch wank to keep the stress level down before the next, uh, like midterm something meeting <laughs> <laughs> I mean they I bet they have bathrooms in the office as well so <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to know <laughs> even if we're into half pine territory that's uh yeah I don't want to visualize that just imagine Glenn he's uh, stuck in someone's <laughs> garden he has nowhere to go <laughs> <laughs> please, please don't imagine me. <laughs> and that being said, he has the possibility of uh, rowing out to his uh, lonely island. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to keep quiet until you two finish this subject. I think. <laughs> I don't, didn't didn't Lonely Island the the band have a song "Dick in a Boat"? No. How <laughs> did it? Dick, Dick in a... <laughs> yeah. He's been out in that boat a long time now. <laughs> he's he's rowing and rowing, but I'm getting anywhere. <laughs> row, it row, looks row, like he's row. rowing, but there's no oar in his hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and his arms moving so fast, he should be steaming across that lake. And here you said we shouldn't imagine you, but you're making it real hard. <laughs> I'm making it hard for you now, I'm okay, Jay. <laughs> I realize you've got, really, you got a really good imagination. <laughs> I, I've, I've seen a few sketches using the same joke, and I'm just waiting for the opportunity to, to use it. I mean, uh, there is a group of friends. One of them is, of course, <laughs> heading into the bushes to have a leak, and uh, one of the friends are just shouting at him, Hey, that's illegal. What? Peeing in the bushes? No, for a grown man to hold a child's penis. Kikoki. <laughs> 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 <sighs> 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 so we didn't uh, win the the stories challenge by DIYs by Chloe. That was a disgrace. Yeah, yeah. Bribed, obviously. Yeah. yeah. I mean, three cabinets. It feel a bit, uh, yeah, prearranged or what you call it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, was in the bag. <laughs> I think that's I think that's why I don't want to make anything ever again now. Ah, did Chloe kill your mojo? Yeah, yeah she did. It's <laughs> Chloe's fault. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this I mean I, I usually enter these competition just for the hell out of it and make a fun video but yeah this one kind of stung so yeah i don't think i'll enter one of these challenges ever again that was my, th- <laughs> that was my thoughts as well yeah yeah <laughs> i don't even know why people do challenges they should do alongs like we do yeah and yeah, then no nicer. one no one feels bad at the end do they mm. I mean, the, the world is getting more polarized every day. And of course, yeah, have a longs. <laughs> <laughs> you come back to your anti-stress measures there. Yeah, I think my brain is still at that point. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <laughs>
I tried to move us on, but no, we were still stuck in that pit. <laughs> I was thinking could we twist that into a challenge, but I don't think that's for real. <laughs> It's a, no. the fastest way of getting banned from Instagram, I guess. <laughs> That's the last live you will ever ever do on that platform. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Michelle says uh, that she thinks I should buy that lathe too because she's bored of me looking at them now. <laughs> <laughs> And she started and then, this. <laughs> and then it's all the accessories. And oh, you can get one of these. And oh, look yeah. at this. And yeah. yeah. Oh, look, this metal lathe will complement the wood lathe perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> Just balance the workshop one on each side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then you need one that goes counterclockwise for those uh, reverse bowls. So yeah. The, the current lathe goes counterclockwise because it's a drill. I've not tried lathing on the hammer action yet, though. <laughs> do it. <laughs> I might do. I mean, that could be interesting. If I if I um, if I get a new lathe, I might as well destroy this one, hadn't I? Yeah, that's a that's a yeah. video series. Will it lathe? And then, yeah, uh, good chuck. Uh, I mean, could you chuck a cinder block in it? That would be cool. <laughs> yeah, maybe. That's, I was going to start off a bit softer and maybe go with a melon. Or coconut yeah. would be cool, wouldn't it? Or you can get these huge ass <laughs> candles that they have in churches, and then you yeah. can just make that into a table leg. Uh... That's actually a really decent idea. Yeah, yeah. don't need much tools either. You could just use one of your uh, chopsticks as well. Should be more yeah. than sharp yeah. enough. Yeah, hot spoon. <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> Having it, toward, like, having, having it red hot. Like. <laughs> soldering iron actually be cool, wouldn't it? I mean, could you... That would be awesome if you... Uh... A bit of hot wax in your eye, though. But, yeah, yeah. definitely need to put goggles <laughs> yeah. on for that one. I mean, probably people are into that. Um, but could you build a lathe where the the piece is stationary and then the cutter just rotates around. <laughs> yeah, oh, I think idea. that's a milling machine. <laughs> no. <laughs> and yes. But you, you don't get the entire engine, the motor around, so of course... Uh... <clears throat> If the, whole lathe, if the whole lathe's spinning around the workplace, though, it's, it's really hard to get the chisel in there, isn't it? <laughs> you have to be really, really quick yeah. <laughs> between turns. Just stab it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but then, of course, the, the, the cutting bit will be stationary to that rotating. So you, you, could, you could basically just use a battery-powered... I have that battery-powered Bosch router that handheld it's which is basically rubbish. So I, I could donate that to a, a rotating yeah. reverse uh, lathe experiment. I should try and figure out the petrol engine thing for it, shouldn't I, really? Yeah, that would be awesome. That yeah. would be really... Uh... Yeah, and then KJ, the pressure would be on you to petrolize something. You could, go, <laughs> you could go out into the wood, you can chop down the tree, you can take oh. the bark off and you can chuck it in and just start your lathe. You don't have to go into your workshop at all. Fuck, that's brilliant. Yeah. I like that idea. And, and then I can just, just, cheat, on, I can uh, just cheat. And then I can just cheat like you and take yeah. a, re a ready turned piece in. <laughs> just buy a table leg at Ikea. And yeah. then like... <laughs> With the barcode still on it, yeah. <laughs> put, a tree, put a tree trunk in and then take a square leg out that you've just turned. <laughs> yeah. 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 How did you turn a square leg? <laughs> Skills. Skills. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You just have to pull it out <laughs> like in the same frequency after rotation. Yeah. Easy peasy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I've seen lathes where you, you chuck things in and I don't know what the, the end piece it, it 
it's called, but I've seen people put a round end piece on and then they do some lathing and afterwards it's a square one. So, I mean, it's possible, I guess, to start out round and get a square piece. Turn it round and then run it through the table, so on four sides. <laughs> I mean, if you have one of those uh, copying jig uh, thingies that with a spinning blade on it that moves... That oh, you use yeah, for, yeah. for airplane propellers and that sort of thing. I've seen that reel as well. That was fantastic, doesn't Those it? Those are amazing. A bit, yeah. Especially the ones from like the 30s when work safety is not really an option. <laughs> you just have a big spinning blade but without thinking, any protection. If you have a petrol engine to drive the work piece and then instead of using these handheld boring knives or whatever you call them, then you can have like a a mounted chainsaw that you also can run, which you can move uh, sideways. Yep. That's that pretty easy, I think, to make that happen. <laughs> just arrange three chainsaws in all the axes and have them moving and just pull something through it and get a... See, you could do that now because the way the, the way the chainsaw blade spins, I could, if I left it on, if I left the lathe on the drill... I can make that turn counterclockwise then, which makes sense, doesn't it? And they'd be opposing each other, the blades. So, yeah, the workpiece and the blade. Yeah, and that would be safer, wouldn't it? Because there is no risk of uh, something jamming, jamming up and getting yeah. flung across the room. Yeah, it's going to get flung away from you, isn't it, then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure it is and of course uh, chains will have the safety measures and everything and then yeah, yeah. you always have the safety gear when you're using a chainsaw as well so yep shorts <laughs> shorts t-shirt flip-flops <laughs> and ear defenders always got ear defenders on <laughs> yeah not for the noise but to listen to podcasts yep exactly <laughs> priorities <laughs> So what will you have made or edited by the next podcast, next episode? <laughs> You'll have a long video out, Havar. Yeah, but I don't really count that. I mean, the edit is done. I just have to have the computer to run the, the new compilation. But I have a project coming up. And of course, I'm procrastinating doing the the final video on the hell quarter or the final 2.0 before starting the 3.0. Um, but yeah, I, I don't feel... I need another petrol engine for my next project. And, uh, <laughs> even if I get it, it's like I'm having a holiday. I'm going to spend the days with the kids. And do I want to spend the evenings in my workshop? Probably, but I also thought of having an experiment like maybe I can go to bed a little bit earlier and don't be so exhausted after dinner. So, um, of course, that might just as well be for not having to work. But yeah, so I'm maybe not going to fall into that trap that, all right, I have a holiday coming up so now I can get a lot of shit done and then end up stressing feeling that i need to make some projects and then of course not being 100 percent uh, there uh, when we are at the cabin or whatever or hanging with the kids so yeah might uh, actually slow a little bit down in the summer and come yeah. more back yeah. to action in august so what about you kj well i I would hope to have the next video edited till next week, but no one should be holding their breath for that one. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, I mean, I have a lot of garden projects, so hopefully I will have been making a, a brick and mortar uh, a little, uh, some steps up to a, a platform. It's just, oh, nice. just laying laying bricks or you know, I mean concrete bricks thingies whatever and I've never done that before so that's gonna be interesting to see if my DIY ah, I'll just figure something out <laughs> will actually 
function or not. Make, oh, make life a little easier on yourself and get put a little bit of plasticizer in the mortar mix. What's that? It's an additive. You put it in the mortar mix, and when you slap the mortar on the brick when it's still in your hand and take it over to where you want to lay it, it doesn't fall off. It just helps it stick. Yeah, you talked about that in yeah. some... What, what did you call it? Plaster? Pla- plasticizer. Plasti... I've got a bottle in the uh, work in the garage. I'll send you a pick later if uh, you can't find it. Ah, it's uh, you called soft your softener in in Swedish, I think. When I Google it, uh, I mean, a... I, I usually I go with Wikipedia and find the thing I in the language I know, and then just switch to Swedish and then I see <laughs> what it's called there. That's the easiest that way makes to do sense. it. <laughs> That's the that's one thing I want to try from AliExpress, and that is, you get these plastic uh, pouring molds for concrete. So if you make a, a pathway in your garden, instead of like mm, finding individually shaped stones or concrete bricks and just laying them down, you can just level out the path. Uh, put some gravel down and then of course you put this form down and then you pour concrete in and just scrape it level and then you wait for five minutes and you lift it up and move it and of course the pattern is repeating so you could just make that track and they have various types that are decent and it looks okay i've seen them used in various projects around so that that would be a cheap solution for making a few pathways just for fun. I think it looks okay until the pathways get a crack in the middle of them or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, but it is. It's actually... It's totally separated in between, so it's it's basically leaving separate stones, so you have to go oh, over okay. and fill, fill gravel in between the cracks. Oh, okay. Oh, I missed that. Sorry. Yeah, but uh, I mean, we, we have uh, some neighbors up the road that have that, and it, it looks really nice. Uh, closer to the house, but the closer you get to the to the main road, the more cracks, as you say, or <laughs> there been on the stone. So it looks like shit when it meets the the asphalt. But yeah, because they yeah, I mean, they might have been they they went for too big uh, of stones or something like that, or they didn't do enough groundwork, perhaps. Yeah, probably a combination. But yeah, if you don't do good groundwork, it will live and of course it would probably be just as easy just to get some uh, like these uh, sheafed uh, blocks and just put them down I mean then you don't have to pour anything so <laughs> <laughs> was that a wrap? yes, yes. Yeah, you're hosting you can call it I'm calling it the end good night <laughs> <laughs> or whatever right. time it is when you're listening yeah <laughs> good whatever <laughs> you're having it seems like uh we found uh, the catchphrase there yeah yeah happy stress relief <laughs> <laughs> all right good night guys and girls thank you for listening it's been a blast see you again next week Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> now you've got at least three options to choose from. <laughs> Happy stress release. That should be on a pillow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.